It is time to revisit Victoria. And before we do, it's important to know that this stream is brought to you by Boom Sneak Energy. Head on over to sneakenergy.com, creator code SPARTY at checkout. Help me. Please, because I'm dying slowly. That's neither here nor there. Moving over to the stream. Let's have some fun. Hi. Hello. 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 You just coming here? Well, in the common area. Just chilling. We got in the common area chilling. Because you're a good boy. Yeah, no outfit today, Telmo. I'm pretty exhausted, man. So, no outfit. Just, uh, just me and the puppy. Oh. Somebody's probably going to take a nap while I play. Let me put your little gate up so Take a nap for a bit, huh? He's so big, man. He's like 32 pounds, 33 pounds. Turn two. Roman turns eight weeks old. Or eight months old tomorrow. Is Singapore playable? I believe so. Oh, yeah, I think it's British Empire at that time. There you go. There's Singapore. Ah, uh, like, where's your whore? Got a normal system. Uh, 32 pounds, so... Uh, actually, I mean, that's like 15 kilos, give or take. Two Sicily Sicilies, but it's hard, man. It's not a potential economy, though. Okay, well, yeah, let's take a look at where we're at. So, sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm a little... I'm a little kind of out of it still. It just there's just been a it's been a flurry of streams the last four days. I've never streamed four days in a row like this, so we're going pretty hard in the paint. Um, but I figured I can stream this today while I learn more of it, so that on uh, Saturday and Sunday I can get you guys a you know a top tips video and a um um. A, f a first time playing video out on Saturday and Sunday. So I'll try and get those guys, those those guides done for you guys ASAP. So today we're going to be playing again as Piedmont um, <clears throat> Sardinia. Sardinia Piedmont, whichever you want to call it. Um, and we're we're a little further down the line. Technologically, we've researched atmospheric engine. That's the only thing that's probably different. We're working on mechanical tools. No, no, working on nationalism. We're exposed to mechanical tools. But if you don't get stuck in the import, ex don't get stuck in the, uh, the aim of the game is to grow your coming out someone else's. Yeah, Tom's got a really good point, and that's what we're going to kind of work on right now. So we have insufficient tax capacity. I don't really understand that so each point of taxation capacity in a state allows for the efficient a taxation of 10k pops we have in total pops 3.7 million no it's gdp where's our pops what's our total pop total population is 3.68 uh, mil this music right here sounds like the writers of rohan music Ride now! Ride now! Like, right on the fields of Pelennor. 
Right? Like, it, is this a classical movement? Like an actual classical movement? Okay, so taxation capacity. Uh, if the population of a state outgrows its taxation capacity, the efficiency of all forms of taxation will be reduced. Okay, so it's not... You don't get a penalty on the portion that you've outgrown. The entire capacity in which to tax is, is penalized. Can be increased through research, certain building type society challenges. Okay. Well, yeah, James, this, 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 this is paradox, brother. <laughs> um, okay, so I know we influence this by constructing more government administration buildings. So we're doing that right now. This is going to increase our taxation capacity by 50. Um, a technology we could have done otherwise, something that uh, Flying Dutchman brought to me. And a huge shout out to Flying Dutchman. He's been giving me a lot of uh, fun little tips. Is Central Archives here? This is the filing cabinet you were talking about, right, Dutch? Plus 25 to taxation capacity. Plus one to max home affairs institution investment, but unlocks standardized fi filing system. Marry your cousin. Epic invention. All right, so maybe we'll go with that after this. All right, we're unpausing here. Oh, uh, let's take a look at our, our, our market too, just to kind of rehash that. So right now, the trade routes that we have active, and I'm I'm open for any kind of discussion on this. I'm, I'm getting better understanding it. So obviously, these are imports. We are importing liquor, and our demand for it is pretty substantial. Nope, that's not the button I wanted to press. We have quite a few sell and buy orders. The pop needs 259. We are importing 259. So <clears throat> I can't shut off that trade route really. I wish there was, a, okay, there's a back button. I wish there was a forward button. We're exporting iron. Um, importing artillery. Exporting tools. So it looks like Mana Wars. Okay, so you guys can help me out with this. <clears throat> the price in our market is 25% higher. But that doesn't matter because we're exporting them. I guess it's worth noting though that we are <clears throat> we are not producing enough to, tr to uh, no historical data. Why not? So, we're paying a premium right now for wood and for clothing. We are producing wood and clothes, and I guess that's worth taking a look at too. Sardinia here, our arable land, is mainly tons of mines. We've got two mines, five logging camps, and two fishing wharves in Sardinia. And then in Turin, or Piedmont, Turin's the capital of Piedmont, uh, we have one iron mine, but five livestock ranches and five wheat farms. Series S? What's your Series S? What's a Series S? What's a Series S? The higher price of Mana Wars in your market is increasing the cost of running your naval bases. So let's take a look at that. So Urban... Shipyards, uh, or, or do you mean naval bases? Naval bases don't produce man of the art. Man of the art. Um, it's the it's the it's the shipyards that produce them. So you're saying this is what's co is it costing an increase in this? Are you saying? Dwarf Fortress ACs are crazy. Ah.
But naval bases, do they even cost money to, to, to operate? Iron went down in price, hardwood went up in price. Yeah, I guess I just don't see the, where, the, where the cost of the, running the naval bases is, is. I see the wages part here. A weekly balance. Expenses. Okay. Because the naval bases are doing a buy order. Weekly balance. Uh, tell me what was the question. There is an income tab. It's called a budget tab. I'm gonna hover over this too. Holy God! You tanked. Got it. Okay. What was this? Government expenses. Taxation revenue. Oh, okay. So kind of making sure that green is bigger than red is kind of obvious, but that's that's crucial. Obviously, we are much in debt. Yeah, because we we just started constructing a new uh, government sector. Mm, okay. So what should we do with some of these balances? I mean, we have quite an excess of, of liquor. I could shut off one of those trade routes. I have got enough to do another trade route if I need to. Um, we're fine on tools. Maybe worrying about some of these could be a good idea. That increase finances. Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question, Jason. We're making livestock. We're producing here meat. I could switch over to making fabric though. Do I need meat in abundance? What's our, what's our meat situation? Not necessarily high in demand. That's at five, so I could I could take these livestock and turn them into fabric. And lose ten meat. Tom, I kind of wish that the, the buildings were broken up like that. Build infrastructure first, then resources and food, then basic goods, then advanced goods, then luxury. I kind of wish it was like that versus urban, rural, and development. What base resource are you producing in the highest abundance? I don't know. Is there a way I can check that quickly aside of just looking at a balance tab? Um, looking at, I guess, overall buildings... I think I've got <sighs> click the barrel in the market tab. These are staple goods. Yeah, Belgium honestly seems like the one, the, the best one to start off with. I totally agree with you on that. Um, so buy order is demand, sell order is supply, basically. If you want to think of it that way. I think that's a good way of looking at this. You have a Steam discount for this one. I don't, YouTube user, but you can go to Nexus Store to support me. Um, anyone who does not have the game, if they want to pick up the game, you can head to Nexus.gg to support me. Uh, if it's on sale on Steam... It'll be reflected in there, hopefully. What I've seen, you want to get your market as price as close as balanced as possible, so your cost of manufacturing and manufacturing and goods stays low enough while the raw goods still make money unless you subsidize. Um, God, I hate what you just said, Laser Edge, because it makes sense, but it's also confusing, and I get what you're saying. Okay, so you're saying, and a lot of this, uh, someone made a comment like, this would be really great if you played the game. Like, motherfuck you. <laughs> this game is not easy to just play. I have to wrap my head around abstract economical concepts, which I hate. <laughs> so basically what we're saying is you want to keep manufactured products 
price point low by producing raw goods as much as you can. So you keep the byproduct low, you keep the raw good as high as possible. In, in well, byproduct uh, price low by keeping your manufacturing or production of the byproduct of the raw good high. What's up, Giovanni? How you doing, dude? All right. Um, so sell orders. I guess to answer someone's question here, I think I've got wood in abundance. Yeah, logging camps are pumping it out. Wheat is in abundance, ish. But you see, we still have just huge amount of buy orders here. Hmm. Not gonna import twenty wood. Okay, I'm just gonna keep that going here. We're gonna keep this. I do need wood, yes. I'm just saying I'm producing a lot of it. Um, if there are buy orders, you can expand. Oh, well, there's quite a few buy orders. We can't expand logging. Where, where? Um, so here's a better question. So we have zero out of eight logging camps here in Piedmont, and in um, Sardinia we have five of eleven logging camps. I know that the the tutorial tells this, and I can't remember what they said, but. If you look at the per level values, we're getting 60 more wood uh, 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 produced per level of the logging camp. Am I better off making another logging camp in um, Piedmont or making a level six in Sardinia? Tenio, the, the thing about the thing, the thing about the thing, the thing about having high, like, look at this, man. Look at my mines. These are great mines. But making them and getting them online is kind of difficult. Okay, so if your raw goods are overproduced and drop too low in price, then the manufacturer will love that. But your resource production will stop working once the cash reserve for that building run out. Christ, dude. What did I learn the last couple days? D that I shouldn't play this game. That I should just that I should just stick to fucking Bannerlord. Groceries went up in price. I wonder why. I have no idea what to do right now. I would, I would, I would gladly go play COD. It's, uh, it unlocks tomorrow. <clears throat> okay, so we have general staff unlocked. And yeah, the map is the map is beautiful. Actually, the map is really nice. It's really cool to kind of see it all. Correct. If you do make more construction sites, you can build more things concurrently. But I, I don't know at what threshold that comes in. <clears throat> okay. Okay, and that's another question. With construction sectors, do you focus on one location or do you expand? Do you have to build railroads and build your cities up for better trade? So rainbows, by by building railroads, it enables you to have trade without any convoy uses, which is actually very nice. So then maybe I make it in Sardinia because 
we want to make an, okay, okay follow-up question to that where are we making our next logging camp are we expanding sardinias up to six or are we making piedmonts giving them their first logging camp and if so why I mean, uh, Brigia, I'm kind of going off of what you said. I expand to where I build most because then local construction gets the modifiers. I get what you're saying there. I like that. <clears throat> Benji the band hitting us with an old school meme. Yo, dog, I heard you like Sicilies, so I put a Sicily in your Sicily so you can Sicily while you Italy. I love that, man. I love that. Send the children to the coal mines. You can do that in this game. It's like Frostpunk, but it actually happened. So, understand what you're saying, uh, Ace, about, look, man, you should build whatever you want. But I'm asking, is there an advantage to diversifying your 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 production of resources over um siloing it like okay i'm looking at piedmont piedmont has got the potential for eight logging camps versus sardinia which has a higher potential at 11 and they're already off to a good start at five but do i want to have multiple locations like i i don't know if that really necessarily helps and if that works is it good Yeah, I've heard there's, there is an extra cost in new location. Starting up a brand new one does cost you more, yes. If you want to be powerful, logging your capital problems can generate plus capitalists with more political power. Interesting. Maybe enough for peasants to work the camps. It doesn't matter other than possible bonuses from the state of your promoter. Okay, so really, it really is just truly wherever the fuck you want. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go to buildings, construction. We'll make one of these in Sardinia. And we will make an additional expansion upon the logging camp in Sardinia. There we go. Uh, Do to day and I couldn't tell you, my brother. Uh, the UI is better than 2. I booted up 2 to try to learn before 3, and I was like, no, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> James Lee, come on, man. Come on, man. Another region to build up. Oh, okay, so Tenny, you're saying, you're saying looking at it on a per-state basis. The expensive government good is wood. Mechanical tools. Okay, for tooling workshops and for nurture manufacturers, livestock ranches. Okay, good. Lisa Railways. Good. And oh, over. That's a good point. Okay. We're learning so many. We're learning so much stuff through exposure, which I actually really like. Central banking. Two brother we will once we finish nationalism. Yeah, uh, Jan, I, I do want to get uh, railways up and running pretty quickly. That's military good, man of war. Okay, so I, I want to drive down the cost on those. The, oof. Don't really know how to, though. Let's 
I mean, our economy's not doing terrible. It's it's kind of just wavering down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Any nice place for me to colonize? I don't know, Firefly. I mean, I could... <laughs> Tunis. I could try Triple Tomp, tri Triple Litania. Yeah, and I, I, I was thinking about that as importing this, but there's nothing that's really gonna have, I guess, too big of an imp uh, a hit for me. I mean, like, I could tap into my alliance with France and do this. Can these bots just fuck the fuck off, like? Okay, so regardless what happens here, I'm looking at the import here on the amount. It has the same effect no matter what on the price impact on my market. It's the price impact on their market. But I just don't think this is worth really importing. It's 20. Yeah, they had lots of that, lots of this. Well, right now we're working on, we're trying to do this. So Tenio, how do you do that? There's a baking has been learned. So now we are getting way more tax. Politician has died. Capello. And it covers sisters of battle class when they come to Inquisitor Martyr. Are they actually coming to Inquisitor Martyr, Ramazon? They're also coming to uh, Battle Sector. Well, I know what you're saying. Uh, you're making it sound like I can build a bunch of buildings at once. And I don't know how to do that. I actually really do like Inquisitor Martyr. It feels really jank, though. I love it, but I, I it feels so jankety. Like, how do I get these both to start producing? Five logging camps, one iron mine, one twin march will result in tools and iron being even, producing a surplus of wood. Interesting, Rhett. So, Jan, we have. Take a look at budget. So we have some consumption taxes on liquor, services, luxury furniture, and luxury clothes. Uh, Maharaja of Ind, I would definitely do that. But right now I just want to learn the game. So our taxation capacity is still low. That's interesting. Now why is that? Everything's positive right now, so we're in good shape, technically. I do want to do this. We're just getting nationalism. Rank of certain people is greater or equal to major power, and major power we have to be what? Major power is getting the following. Um, we have to be what? In the top twenty?
If the prestige of the becomes at least 128, their rank will increase in major power. So how do we increase our prestige? What is our prestige? Is that up here? So our prestige is 88. So we need to get it to like up here. Are these all considered major powers? Okay, unrecognized major power. Because it's just, just shy of 128? There's Okay, thank you, Laser Edge. I have been telling you that I like math and collect coins. <laughs> like, I am lucky I have a girlfriend. <laughs> well, that would make one of us. Being a top producer in goods adds prestige, depending on the good will lead to more prestige. Ah. Okay. So basically, if we, if we go balls deep on production of iron, which we are not a significant producer of, but we have the capability to be so, we can crush it. Such law, I have a lot of analysis paralysis. It's why I'm asking people so many questions. Okay, so we just increase our construction sector here. Logging camps should hopefully go pretty well. Industry is fully employed. Okay, good. I think. Fuck, fabric is up again, man. GDP equals prestige, okay. Our GDP is going up, gradually. We could tap into the French market here for some fabric. Yes, we, or we were influencing France. It, usually it appears right here. Well, we were. I don't know if we still are. Maybe we can't anymore because we entered into... Yeah, probably are maxed out. Genial and amiable. But yeah, they seem to be... seem to like me quite a bit. Well, my my current interest is is triple Tania. Do I do I really want to do that? Or North Africa is my current interest. Uh, Kieran Wolf, it's good. It's just it really it requires a lot, man. You have an implied interest in your own territories. I already have an interest in Occitania. The Grand Edition probably just includes like some sort of season pass, man. Uh, tell me I can't activate sawmills yet. You know, I struggled more uh, last time. Dude, Mary, uh, I got so frustrated the last time we were playing. I got so frustrated. I get it. I get it more so now. So do I want to remove my interest in North Africa? And if so, why do I want to put an interest in France? Um, I understand that interest allows you to do political plays, but I hear political plays as like, 
oh, if you want to do political plays, you want to take that location. Is that not the way to think about it? Account, <clears throat> a country maintaining an interest in a strategic region signals to the rest of the world that they might get involved in diplomatic plays taking place there. Having an active interest in a strategic region is a requirement for any diplomatic action. You cannot colonize the region. What's up, Gary? Don't interest North Africa for now. Use it to get an extra trading partner, Russia or Ryan, or an actual early col colonization opportunity in the Pacific. Okay. So maybe, okay, we'll release... Uh, North Africa. So, do we want to do North Germany, Rhine, or France? Equals an equal trade, or you can side and deploy plays in that region. Okay. So, get the whole of France. I'm kind of on that. I, I, I'm down with the whole of France. I, I'll give you into that. We've maxed out our relationship with France. It's between France or the Rhine, really. Well, and I got Grand Edition, I hope I understand the game before the first expansion. Free artists and you will, bro. Gary, how dare you, dude? You're involved in diplomatic plays, okay, potential wars. The opportunities or colonization priorities is much. You can also trade with people who interest you, as far as I know. The maximum amount from getting more from bankrolling or you need Marseille. Just cause. <laughs> we have. We have uh, the interest in it at least. I guess I'm just. I guess I'm not sure if putting an interest in the the entirety of France gets me any more benefit than just doing Ossetan, Ossetania and then doing it in the Rhine, where I can then expand to the Rhine. Let's take a look. Glass face. I'm down. We'll do this. We can change it at any point. It's not like it really matters. What? Okay, so yeah, it doesn't add anything. Okay, then let's... Let's do the Rhine. Um, Ham of Taylor, I don't know, because I don't know what that content includes. Okay, um, people were asking about buildings, rural, logging camps. So, hardwood production is... What does this two mean? You have two options for hardwood production. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So right now we're doing hardwood production here, and right now we're doing sawmills. And Sardinia is not producing softwood, or a hardwood. They're prioritizing hardwood. And the reason behind that is, we do have a minor demand for hardwood, so I didn't want to shut it off entirely. Okay, I'll see you soon, YouTube. Do we want to change that though? Um, let me see, let me take a look here. Uh, okay, so we're logging camps. So this one's producing just enough hardwood to kind of meet our needs. We have needs of 16. Um, I could shut that off and just do this <clears throat> and go like full bore here and produce just more wood and then trade for hardwood. Raises peasants, etc. Doesn't it? Wouldn't you want? Would you want to build it where you want to promote pops? Sure. <laughs> uh, I think. Yep. 
It's just just watching my thing like that is so funny to me. Fabric has kind of pissed me off though. No, 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 buildings. So livestock, slaughterhouses, more meat. Uses more tools. That actually might be worth it. Because, um, let me look at my tool surplus. There was five tools. Well, fuck my ass. Never mind. Lockman, I can't help you with that question, man. Sorry, dude. I, I just am not. I'm not good enough for the game to give you an, an actual answer. It's definitely, it's it's feature complete and rich, but I don't know enough about what's going on. I don't have any sulfur. I don't think. Tooling, okay. Pig iron. So this uses steel. Instead of iron, we're not producing steel. It's just super complex, yeah. I did turn it on ACS, but it's really not that helpful. It the the information that it gives you is so like fractured and so delayed in its delivery that you're like I don't really know what the fuck that. I, great, cool. I don't. I, that can't help me right now. Tell me why is nice, but <laughs> it's in my closet, Ram. Yeah, we're working on a logging camp right now. Yeah, I think making another I think making another one of those is a good play too. Uh, expanding our our iron mines here. Oh, what's this? Well, I don't think we have coal. I don't think we have a I don't think we have coal. We have a means to produce coal, so maybe we make a coal mine to to maximize our our iron output. What do you guys think on that? Because this would go from picks and shovels, tools consumed five. This would this would take five more tools, and it would no. Oh. It would decrease our laborers, but increase our machinists. Okay, so we'll make a coal mine. That'll be the play. Yeah, I'll make a coal mine here, and I think we just. Focus on Sardinia being our mining location. And we'll make Piedmont our livestock and wheat farm location. Look at that, 135, 135. And maybe we and maybe we go ahead and make another building sector, or is that too another building sector in uh in Sardinia, or is that too bold? Like, I guess at what pace do you make building sectors or construction sectors? <clears throat> Coal mines and send the children. You're 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 a cretin, James. You're a cretin, bro. <laughs> Yeah. 
and maybe we switch to iron frame buildings soon, soon. But have some construction sectors everywhere. So why have construction e uh, everywhere, Dutch? Help me out with that. Because a lot of you guys are kind of giving me some a bunch of information on construction sectors and I'm trying to sort it out in my brain. Fast, otherwise you build will crash the market by using all the woods and fabric. Okay. This building speed, like five to 10 of them minimum. Five to 10 of them. So I've got three right now. Or are you saying like... Like, should I make another one in Savoy or make another one in Sardinia? Um, speed in the state that they're built. Yeah, 100%. I know that. Available labor peasants. Well, I'm building in both Sardinia and Piedmont. Those are the two locations that are like my biggest one. What is this? What is this? What's this? Remains in Piedmont. Okay. Well, we can let this kind of keep going. That's whatever it wants to do here. Speeding up expansion. You need to ramp up your production of everywhere mangroves and a world grub. You create like five in Sardinia and five in Piedmont. Okay. Lots of potential, Jacob, but. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it with anyone. I don't think I would play this game long term, at all. I think that it's really fun, but in my mind, all I'm thinking about is I can't wait to play the next CK3 expansion and have more of an active play in the world. This is definitely for someone who wants to play a society and market simulator. I, I prefer more of a kingdom simulator where I'm expanding the borders of a kingdom nonstop. Um, canaries, double bonus. Yeah, man, Trevor, you always come in here with your sh with your salty British attitude, man. You fucking imperialist piece of shit. <laughs> I'll go get a couple tea bags and flush them down the toilet right now just to make my point. If you like spreadsheets, then this game is for you. Um, I definitely think the game is fun and interesting because I like the historical point. Victoria 3 is probably the best game I know that I won't recommend. I mean, that's such a good point. Like if someone said, hey... How's Victoria 3? Do you recommend it? I'd be like, it's a great, it's an amazing game, and I think it's really cool and really well built, and it's beautiful, but I wouldn't recommend it unless, oh, you're Irish? Shit, I didn't know that, man. I thought you were, I thought you were British. Well, you know what? I know this isn't true, but only to make you mad, Ireland's part of the, part of, part of the UK. I only did it to make you mad. I know that's not true. Jacob, they did a really big video on what their plans are for the future, and there's a lot of really cool things on the horizon, so. I'm excited for that. Yeah, you know, Tenio, this game will be huge with expansions, but I don't want to wait for that. Um, I think Paradox's kind of rate of rolling out... Um, totally disrespectful to the Irish. I only did it as a joke to, to piss off Travers, Briggy. I only did it as a joke to piss off Travers. I just don't really want to have to wait, you know, like, like and, and, and dude, and CK3 is a game that has got a lot, it had a lot of bare bones mechanics that are starting to get fleshed out now, two years plus. Those are, that's a frustrating position to be in because CK3 is a really awesome game, but it needs its expansions. It needs its, its, its growth. Where can I find a CK3 expansion vid? Uh, what do you mean, Gary? I didn't cover their, uh, what they're doing in the future because there's just been so many crazy things going on right now. I can show you the link, though. One Proud Bavarian covered it, but it's a 45-minute video, and it's a quicker read than that. Um, but if you, it, and he has a lot of good insight into, like, what goes on in the company. So if you want, like, that level of perspective, OPB definitely has that covered for you. 
Oh, a post. Sorry, they, they made a post. <laughs> Paradox is the best at releasing fantastic games four years after they actually release. Yeah, I mean, dude, look at Hearts of Iron. Hearts of Iron is almost like a 10-year-old game, and it's... It's still releasing expansions and it's still got a bump in community. Here, I got you, Gary. Uh, Dev Diary CK3. Roman, stop being a weirdo over there. You're just clicky clacking around. Friends and foes. Or plan in the future for the future. Here you go, dude. This is what Paradox has planned for the future. You know, I, I, the problem I have with Hearts of Iron, and, and dude, I, don't get me wrong, World War II is probably one of my favorite and most knowledgeable points of history. But my problem with Hearts of Iron is World War II fanatical histor uh, armchair. Uh, historians are not nice people. Not nice people. They will correct you until they are fucking blue in the face. It's kind of like old guard 40k fandom. Is they're just super, they're just super gatekeepy. It's like, hey man, I grew up watching Tales of the Gun on History Channel too, bro. <laughs> Alsace and Lorraine. Hey, Gareth, there you go, man. Oh, Gary, uh, Gary, it's you, right? It's, uh, it's Big Daddy, um, uh, Blues Fan 27, right? But hey, everybody in chat, give a shout out to. Um, Gary Rickett, who just recently recovered for, from some surgery, and he's been playing, uh, he's been playing CK3 through Oxycontin hazes and stuff like that. So everybody give a shout out here to Gary Rickett. Larger nation, yeah, I started with two smaller nations and found it to be tedious, and now I'm doing a USA game, and it's been a lot more enjoyable. John, I have not. I, I mean, I could be definitely down for that. I guess, I guess I'm someone who really likes the tedium of hard-to-play starts. Because I feel like it's like jumping into the fire feet first and just like, okay, I got to learn this now. It's sink or swim. And if I don't learn, I'm fucked. Oh, man, don't, don't, even, don't even thank me, bro. I didn't go through surgery, brother. <laughs> Trevor next with Johnny definitely Wonka Oompa Loompa style. Yeah, man, absolutely. They're like, yeah, I mean, you, you don't have enough hair. Sorry, bro, you're out. And I was like, but I could wear a wig. Like, no, we want people with real orange hair. So what I see by looking at the market is my economy is paying through the roof for most things, especially iron mines. So that production is iron mines is going to be pretty crucial. Spiffing Brit does love this game for our reason. He has a, a, a bunch of videos and he played it live. I even asked him if I should even bother. He was like, eh, it's a fun game once you learn it. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to produce this fucking thing. I find that I'm just fast forwarding through this game way more than I am in... Uh... Like we're four years into where we started. plantations. Senator living increased to 11 in Piedmont. I guess that's good.
I've never played EU4. Um, I have an interest in EU4 though. Uh, how, how do you guys like it? I've heard everyone. I heard everyone loves that game. A good vintage. The wine produced in Savoy has been lauded by sommeliers as outstanding. When people say that something ages like wine, they don't always make the distinction between wine and wine. So let me make that distinction. If you can get your hands on a bottle from Savoy, that I should have read this in a fucking Ponzi accent. When people say that something ages like wine, they don't just always make the distinction between wine and wine so let me make that distinction if you can get your hands on a bottle from savoy that bottle can be more than just a good time it can be an investment <laughs> i have a monocle when i do that so exclusive wine for five years five percent prestige or savoy gets popular wine for five years 50 percent building wine output uh opinions here i'm down for anything EU4 feels dated. So that's why I didn't check out EU4, Benji, as I was like, eh, maybe this feels dated. I, I, I have a lot of big interest in Imperator Rome, but I've heard it kind of. Drinking Duck, no! I'm sorry, dude. Streamlabs just, just did that because of your, your more than one emoji. I'm so sorry, brother. Empire of Sin is fun, I think. I remember playing it. Do you export wine or do you use it for internal? I don't even fucking know what I do with wine. Is it a... It seems that we use it internally. Wheat farms produce it and pops need it. So if we produce more, we can export it. Exclusive wine, 5% prestige. <laughs> this is my clan, so I have a tree, a truce, you fuckers. <laughs> yeah, prestige. I was gonna go with prestige. It kind of seemed like the best thing. You would think so, Sardinia. Oh, prestige. Okay, taxation, unused construction production. That'll... Oh, I guess we made the coal mine. So, we're now producing coal, right? One, perfect. Is the... Is that... That, that I imagine we'll build as our, like, kind of... Where is that? Wheat farm, livestock. I guess coal mines. So when would I take a look at something like this and say, okay, this increases my machinists. Machinists are part of the lower strata. I'm losing laborers. Is that something I want to take a look at as far as... I oh mean, see, now I'm going to get into Pops fucking conversation. I fucking hate the Pops. I don't know why Pops bothers me. I think the word Pops is annoying. It's like someone saying the word soda pop to me. I'm like, fuck off with your word soda pop. So once you create a demand for coal, it'll explode. So I should do create a command for a demand for coal by doing this, right? Call them sodas. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's see how that goes.
Best Paradox Games, Stellaris and CK3. What's up, Whiteson? How you doing, man? Much more expensive. So I'm not gonna... We're not gonna import this. This is just gonna naturally increase on its own. Do we make, do we make another coal mine, do you guys think? Or do we make more iron? We do need to get more tools though. I think that's gonna be something to kind of consider here. Um, tooling, where's my tools? I'm a tool. Where's my tooling boys? I guess we can make both, yeah. So one more coal and one more iron, you guys think? So let's do one more coal, one more iron and Sardinia. Um, what was I? I was also, I'm thinking of... 27 new items in my inventory. I don't need all that shit. Where's my shopping cart store? Batautis, how you doing, man? Good to see you, man. I thought about playing Call of Cthulhu. Um, it's on sale right now for seven fucking dollars. And I thought about doing that as like my like Halloween game. Urban, I don't have I don't think I have a discount. Let me take a look here. Uh, Nexus store. Yeah, I don't have a, a special discount for you, but you can support my channel by purchasing through the Nexus store. Didn't the Brits sell opium to China and get the hook during this time period? If so, can you produce it? Yes, you, you can actually do the opium wars. Uh, I already got a, a, a pop-up saying that, um... Uh, that, that that started. <sighs> I do also need way more wood. Whoa, 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 whoa. I can import from the Russian market. Should I do that? That seems, that seems girthy. Or from the Belgian market. I am the the, the I, I've known about these Vitautis. We're at a two hundred and forty nine deficit. Importing that covers our deficit. I free artisan to answer your question, yes. The Russian market is massive. Wood producer will ramp up with levels and give way more than the Belgian. But will it ramp up to the point, uh, Laser Edge, that I don't need it? I guess that doesn't matter though, right? You take advantage of it and then you just cancel the, the trade route when you don't need it anymore. I guess I'm thinking of these things too in too much permanence. I'm thinking of them in too much automation. Like, okay, I'm going to do this so that then I don't need to worry about it anymore. Versus I should think of it, cool, this is a band-aid until I fix my internal production. Maybe that's the way I should be thinking and framing markets rather than going, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I want this imported here and I'll never have to worry about it again. It's like, no, no, you will constantly have to worry about this. <clears throat> uh, it doesn't matter. The, uh, so... It doesn't matter necessarily. Um, like, so, okay, look at the Bolivian market down here. My price, the price that it affects my nation is, is obviously it's like, okay, I'm getting 270, so the price point's so much lower. 
I hate the term. The only reason I hate economy of scale is because if you work in sales or business, it's like bastardized through the roof. Like, yeah, we use economy of scale. Whoa, holy shit. That's the largest donation of the week. And we've done four streams back to back to back to back to back. Firefly with $150. Here's to getting people hooked on opium. Dude, thank you so much, man. <laughs> Anything I can do to hook people on opium. Thank you very, very much, dude. Massive donation here from Firefly. Always swinging in. Always swinging in with the huge donos. Thank you very much, brother. Maybe we'll do this French market one, too. It's not going to cost us any convoys. And let that kind of trickle down for a bit. Nightmare, what's up, man? Uh, uh, I like it. It's just very tedious and hard. Russian grandpa production of raw materials immensely. That will lead to cheaper goods. Belgium will expand their industry more quickly, meaning that they are better for finished goods. Import wood from Firefly. Dude, import everything from Firefly. He's the best, man. Hey, we've gone up in rank to 19. I have not even touched the cultures tab, and I don't want to. What's the purpose of the game? <laughs> um, uh, I wish I had a cool answer for you there, Hollywood. <laughs> <clears throat> Buying from larger markets also allows you to dedicate less resources like convoys and bureaucracy to multiple markets for the same resource. Yeah, it's a really good point of looking at it. Um, like, like, okay, my... Do I really need to make more grain now? Buildings. Rural. Grain production here. So, vineyards. Well, we kind of need those. and sugar. I could switch this over to just grain production, though. What is this doing? Harvesting tools. This pressure is already active. Change harvesting process pressure into harvesting tools. Oh, oh, okay. It's a type of tools. Okay, got you. I got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. So it increases the amount of them. Um, yeah, the, uh, we're trying to work on the uh, uh, Resorgimento. Guys, I got an emergency to deal with real quick. It starts with a P and it's an oop. Here's our balance of things. Um, give me two seconds and feel free to let me know anything we should change or we can take a look at the my buildings and change any kind of productions. Like we're, right now we're starting to run into a deficit now with wheat. We need a lot more wheat. Well, grain in specific. Do we change some of these? Let me know, I'll be right, right, right back.
Oh, okay, sorry about that. Poop knife time. <laughs> but then our amazing wine. Jacob, any open world games out? Um... I can't think of it on my head right now. Okay, so... I mean, we could switch this production method from fruit and sugar to grain instead. But I think we need fruit and sugar. Markets. Sort of. Sort of. Ukraine beer. Could put a tax on wine. This is a luxury, right? We don't have a 100 authority, though. Oops. I love, the Infamous series was really good, man. <clears throat> I have been wrestling nonstop about whether or not to actually do videos for this game. You sick son of a bitch. You know, you've been doing this long enough, you can just tell when someone's going to be a troll. The so luxury just increased in cost, like, through the roof. By 40. Wood decreased in cost. Coal decreased in cost, which is good. Hardwood went up, though. So did groceries. Okay, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. And now, see, now we're producing so much wood. See, this is what I was worried about. Where's those men of war? I feel the depths of our men of war. We're 
producing such a uh, a surplus now of wood. Well, we wouldn't just have a surplus now of wood. We could export some of it. Who? <laughs> Maybe not 440. I could export it to the Spanish market. So 158. I could sell it to the Spanish market and make some good money here. Paper again is fucking costly. Ugh. I'll be honest. Yeah, but you have a lot of diplomacy or influence. I don't really know what to do with it. Like, I don't know, man. Like, every time I feel like I get a resource under check, another one just tanks. So I'm like, man, I I feel like I spend so much time in this fucking market screen. Like, okay, now we have a rampant surplus of both. <sighs> yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, Vizra, it was just me wanting to do my, my 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 national heritage proud. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm mean, I kind of lost for words for what to do right now. I can make another furniture, but I think like what what's the point? I guess we do have a need for furniture, but we guess we have a bigger need though for grain. My just basic clothes are through the roof and cost me 50% more. We could import this, but. I'm not going to lie to you, James. I would never play a game called Democracy 4. That sounds like the worst thing. I'm going to do that. They're close to us, so it's not going to cost any actual convoys. Yeah, 100%. Agree with you there, Firefly. <laughs> I, I mean, politics in general are probably the most boring uh, subject to talk about. Like, I, I feel like that's, like, the subject of, like, small minds. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't... I, I, I just can never really get behind someone having wanted to have a... Uh, a political conversation. Like, let's have a conversation about politics. I'm like, why? We're not going to agree. <laughs> you and I are not going to see eye to eye. And we're not going to convince each other. So let's just not not even go there. Uh, how about your barracks? Is you'll have to fight at some point. Uh, <laughs> I, ooh, these are my barracks. I wouldn't even know who to attack. Like they're wary of us. And the custom union there. Maybe Tuscany?
They're, they have a more literate populace than ours. <laughs> Dude, two sissies is a major power. They ain't fucking around. here with uh, Austria as well. And as those obligations, okay, so I don't know, I mean, if I did it any kind of anything, I think probably would have to be with Tuscany. As strong as Switzerland, much stronger than me, I think. I guess not that much stronger than me. I mean, I could attack Tuscany. Mass produce furniture. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, they're they're right now they're genial and amicable. So I mean, what does bank like? Generate two percent progress, increase relations. What? Well, so what is bankrolling? That what is bankroll? I'm going to diplomatic action where one country pays part of its income to another based on the weekly tax. I do not think I want to do that. Gary, I don't know. I have no idea what war's like here. People states, yeah, what are they? What's their situation like? Nothing. I mean, they got five regular plus 43 conscript battalions, whereas we have, I don't even know, 40 regular and zero conscript battalions. Are they? Oh, wow, they are. They are in a war versus Egypt. And they're losing or winning? I'm probably super blue, dude. I don't know. What do we do, guys? I, I, I really don't know what to do. <laughs> I think this is, again, the kind of like, okay, if I remove working on... What's up, David? How you doing, dude? Uh, I am... I think the game's cool. That's all I can really say. Um, like, okay, if I ignore the market, I don't know what to do in this game. So I think that's kind of like... Another problem of mine is that I don't really have any kind of objectives because I don't really know what I can do, what I should be doing. <sighs> Look at the laws. Where are I from my laws? Oh my god, is that even... politics?
What does this cost to do, though? Mm, okay. I can't even do that. Right, and I can reform it. What's up, Rainmar? Okay. I, I get the that, but what's the point here? Like, okay, I get schools. I care about other schools, 30% care. Okay. River is a clout in the country opposes no schools. Okay, so then do this? Alright, we guess we're doing it. Can I do multiple laws at once? Nope, doesn't look like it. Thirteen percent of the clout endorses child labor. <laughs> no man, fireflies. Fireflies, real deal. <sighs> okay, uh, I don't want to do. Back to this fucking marketing screen. David, good to hear, man. So we got nationalism. Yeah, man. Bannerlord's popping off right now. I'm probably going to make more Bannerlord videos than that Vicky 3 videos, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Is it sorted though? I feel like it's not sorted at all. I feel like I'm, my, my economy is in shambles. We're losing money. <laughs> I feel like we're suffering on all the things we absolutely need, like fucking clothes and grain, and we're having excess of things we don't need, like liquor. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm struggling. Unification candidate? Can't, what the fuck's a fucking unification candidate? Well, this is this is some fucking hogwash. How do I get a part of that?
Peasants listen to represent the total population. Well, what the fuck are peasants? Oh god, I have so many peasants. I don't even know how to decrease my number of peasants. Well, how do I get rid of this crap? So factories, what kind of factories though? Like what, what does that mean, a factory? Is a, that's a mine, so I need manufactories, food industries, textile mills. Make, make shopkeepers and laborers. Build labor jobs, okay. Suppose we make textile mills then? Or fucking more paper mills? I don't know, man. I don't know. Well, maybe we make more shipyards. Because we need... Okay, let's go. Okay, so we need this. We need this. Now let's make another shipyard. Well, let's just fucking let it roll. I don't know what to do with my influence. I don't know who to influence. I could increase. Oof, they're like a really major power. Now. Federico Berger, leader of the rural folk, has made a remarkably play for power in the capital in order to secure a spot for the rural folk within the government. However, it is not entirely clear if they should be awarded if they're, for their novel tactics. There's only one light. This is the rural folk. Okay, so Federico shall be recognized for this. Where is Lovato here? I don't know. Do I care about that interest group? Maybe I increase. Right. Okay. This Luca? It's Luca. You know, I kind of don't like. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Do I really care about influencing them? Maybe I influence. Table states. Why can't I improve relations with them? Let's go to diplomatic lands. Improve relations. Where's the thumb up? Why can't I improve relations with people? Oh, there it is.
What? Why? Oh, that has to be less than amicable. Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Well, I guess we do two Sicilies here. Maybe Papal States? Um, they're amicable towards me, maybe. Switzerland? I'm not. Uh, Parma, perhaps, or Medina? Should I just take over Tuscany? Like, I guess at what point do I want to improve relations? At what point do I want to just outright attack them? How do I make those distinctions? Like, diplomatically, they have a customs union with Austria, which I think. Look at Austria. Puppet state is Krakow. Krakow. Rivalry with Prussia. Custom unions doesn't sound like it does any kind of actual obligation. So, okay, uh, Rhett, how do I see that? You can look at the Diplo place and see what... So if I look at Diplomacy... I don't fucking know, dude. <laughs> Chess piece? Okay. So what am I looking at? Also, two Sicilies would get involved here. And Ashi and Spain would. May side with the enemy. Or remain neutral. France will remain neutral, you dicks. Tuscany, I think, is the only target really here, right? Oh man, that reduces my infamy though. Shit, I lose a lot of relations. Namely with France, I lose eight. Man. This isn't fun. Seriously, Rhett.
The role of discipline in the new religious schools has raised by the armed forces an era, an area of improvement in the plans for their new education system. Uh, take it, make it, take longer than that. I'm fine with that. Yes, I am. Slaughterhouse. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do right now, guys. I feel like I feel like I need something or I'm gonna get bored. What does a rivalry even do? Uh, Benji, I have not. I have not even touched it, man. That's the way it is. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is even worth it, though. Fuck, fuck paper, man. Defensive pack with us. All right, starting to go up. Do we want this defensive pack? We do want this. Let's go. Doom, doom, doom.
I'd love to conquer two Sicilies, but it's not that easy. Okay, so we have textile mills have expanded. That hopefully helps out with this. Yes. Going all out to form Italy, I don't understand, man. <laughs> like, it's not like I can do this like in TK3 where I could just do a bunch of like conquers. It, it doesn't make sense how it works, so I don't really know what to do. Okay, so how do we get die? Synthetic plants, maybe? Yeah, there it is. And wine, okay. Oh my god, Christ. What's up, Flass? So I, why would I stop that though? Because we need this. Now we fucking need fish? Where'd this come from? If I lose that, I mean, I don't know, I don't know. we gotta find out. We gotta find out. I'm gonna find out. Hold on. Oh, cool. US is gonna be doing stuff over here. Wild. Wild. Lazy boy kind of gamer, thanks man. <laughs> it's not going well, I'll tell you that right now. I I this might be the last the last coverage of uh Vicky 3. If I can't like break through today, I don't think I'll keep doing it. Because I'm just like right now I'm kinda like meh. I mean, I could switch to a new location, and we could maybe start from scratch again. 
I mean, well, let's save this and we could we could try starting with the good old US of A. You guys want to try that real quick? I'm not giving you an answer. I'm not giving you a, an option. As the Byzantines? <laughs> Andy Jacks? Yeah, Andy Jacks. United States of America. See what we can do here, brothers. So where the fuck do we declare interest in? We can have quite a few interests, can't we? Uh, our interests. Oh, current is eight. Okay. It's just an economy-based game. You want to take the lands to the west. It was cool hearing you say you say in your CK3 campaigns about how much cool history there is to explain to Victory, but it doesn't work for you. It doesn't work. Yeah, 100%, Mart. That's why, like, I decided, like, I was either going to sit down and play the game today, but I think if I had done that, I would have been like, I don't fucking get this. I don't fucking get this. I'd rather struggle through it on stream, which actually sounds, it sounds like most people probably wouldn't want to do that. Um, But I think I kind of, I want to do that so that I learn it forces me to sit here and learn. And you guys that know it, you maybe can say like, oh yeah, well, this is how I did that. This is what I would use here. Armin, I'm kind of in that, I'm kind of in that boat. Uh, Armin says, Vicky 3 feels empty. There are no events, no real interaction with the AI. Basically, after you get your initial constructions and trade routes, you're just sitting there and watching the profit. I'm done. Kind of like that. That's kind of how I feel. What are you doing under the bed, buddy? What are you doing? Oh, is that a big? Was that a big stretch? That's the biggest stretch. Little goofball. Um. Okay, so we've started off our disappearing interest. Disappearing interest in the Great Plains. Uh, why do I have a disappearing interest in the Great Plains? i just do that and do that. The music though is amazing. I mean, it does look very interesting. That's kind of like, like I said, I really love this era. So that's why I'm like, oh, okay, I want to jump into this. This is fun. But I'm just like, fuck, dude, I don't get it. Okay, expensive cover my good. Clippers. So we need more clippers. Let's go to our shipyard. See what our shipyards are doing. Do we have a particular need for Man of Wars at this point? What's our Man of War thingy? Okay, the Man of Wars are underproducing too, so I can't afford that, so maybe we import some clippers. British market. That'll do, pig. Let that kind of percolate. Um, so that's okay. Five battalions in reserve. I don't know what that means. The Brazil and La Plata can be fine. Can that go away? Uh, it's for taxation capacity in New York. Well, it's fucking New York, that's why. This place sucks. 
That's right, I said it. Greatest city in America. No, it's not. It's not. It wasn't built with cars in mind. It's not. He's a recruiter general. Okay, we can do that. Market, what are we producing tons of? Tons of fertilizer. <laughs> I live on the West Coast, Lassie. Um, in a county outside of LA is the closest is the closest thing to kind of compare it to. Conquer Canada. I mean we can, the Hudson Bay can't company. Um Tobacky, wacky tobacky. Export this. Oh, the French love the wacky tobacky, man. Look at that. Take it. Wine, we can export this. Hmm. I'll touch you no more with <laughs> But what do we need to import? So we need... I find this shocking. Import this from the British market. 350. What's our deficit on it? That's pretty substantial. Fabric. So let's import some of the... Actually, you know, maybe... maybe look at buildings. Um, rural. Toughed up over there. I don't know what that was about, huh? What was that about, little guy? What are you doing? Where'd you get all pivoty pivoty here? Here. Big puppy pneumonia. Big puppy mo going on. I know, bud. Real question is, how are we going to deal with all this shit, dude? Huh? What are you looking at back there? I don't think we need as much fucking... Grain. Or, uh, uh, wine. So maybe if we switch... Good lord. <laughs> now it's almost- now it's over, almost overwhelming, the amount. Oh, we have a, a, a gross amount of fertilizer. Right, don't we? Hines and reserves. So I was a recruiter general, right? So where where do I? So Dixie needs one. Shubrick Thomas Jessup. I love that name right there. I love that name right there. Thomas Jessup. Billy Shubrick seems fine and all. But Tommy Jessup? G General Tommy Jessup is a man amongst men. Let's 
This guy's a little bit more popular. From Dixie. That'll be done. Slavery debate. Stamphole must be true for 10 total years. I'm going to say this is the Missouri Compromise. Oh, shit. Every nation is the same. The same as matter place. Yeah, you know, Armin, that's what I was talking about with Surreal Beliefs. And he was saying that, like, once you learn the game, everything you do applies to every single nation. It's not like, oh, okay, this is... Uh, this country can't do these things. Maybe you can because of arable land, but that's it. Okay, so we need to produce more tools. Buildings. Urban. Tooling workshop. Expand that as well. Whoa, 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 what's this? What's this? What's this do? What is that? So if I press it in New York. Forty five percent productivity compared to the average tooling workshops. I think I would want to do that. Iron in American market is expensive, okay. And we need more iron. That's a rural building. Maze farms. We got a fuck ton of maze farms. What for? You want to come down, bud? Little goofball. That dog is so fucking cute over there. I do declare it's iron mines. What is this? What is this? What is this? What are the average iron mines. Wow, that's fucking crazy. Okay, I know I talk shit about New York, but it's got some shit going on in this. What about journal? What do we got here? The slavery debate. The voters and abolish, abol, abol, abolitionists are engaged in an increasingly rancorous debate about across the nation. Sooner or later, the arguments will stop being made with words and start being made with bullets. The following must be true for 10 total years. The United States has enacted slavery banned. Southern, southern planters, landowners, political strength. Okay. Texan statehood. We observe the conflict between Mexico and Texas with great interest. Should the Texan Republic emerge triumphant, we should try to sway them towards... Okay, yeah, so we should, we should be working on improving those relations. Um, the funny thing about uh, Texas... Funny thing. Um, when Texas got their independence, they tried to have America annex them United States annexed them multiple times. Uh, Texans saw themselves as Americans. Um, they saw themselves also as tech as Texans, but um, they were trying to have America annex them. But America, you know, the U.S. would not annex them at the time because it would throw off the balance of slave and non-slave states, and that was a really hotly debated issue at that time. So they didn't want to mess with that balance. I think they they made two separate queries. Uh, or requests for annexation to Congress or, or to the president directly. I don't know who does. I don't, I don't know who you write to for annexation. Um, but it's a pretty interesting. It's a pretty interesting history, and it's why a lot of Texas. You're gonna fall off, bud. I got you. It's why a lot of Texan industry and stuff is still separate from from. Uh, Right, Sam Adams. Um, from the rest of the infrastructure of, of like the United States, because it was, and then it kind of just like stayed that route. Andy Lennox. <laughs> okay, so we are doing that. Is there anything they can really can bankroll them? I mean, I, I don't know if that's really worth it. 
Oh, we don't have a we don't have to do a thingy. Water tube boiler for sure. We do nationalism. Any other cool things for journals? Path of liberalism. The first transactional railway. Transcontinental. <laughs> transactional. 19th century US politics is absolutely wild. The Articles of Confederation, uh, the Articles of Confederation 2, because um, it, it's kind of like, the best way to think of like the word confederacy is often synonymous with slavery and the South, uh, but the Articles, the two Articles of Confederation that the U.S. operated under after the Declaration of Independence are actually really big cornerstones on what creates um, a national armed forces uh, at the, at at the onset of the birth of the of the nation uh armed forces were not a national thing they were a per state regulated and subsidized entity and it was comprised mainly of militia until it started to get kind of not regularized but when you had the war of 1812 it created a need for a national military and the War of 1812 is actually the true War of Independence in America. Up until 1812, Britain had just looked at the loss in 1776 as uh, a bunch of wayward colonies that they needed to go reclaim. The war with Napoleon caused a huge issue with them. They're like, well, we can't go over there to go recapture them because we're dealing with the, the Napoleonic Wars. And once the Napoleonic Wars were at least kind of buttoned up a little bit, they sent Napoleonic War veterans over to the U.S. And the U.S. had nothing but um, bullshit military at the time. It had a, a, a decent enough uh, navy because they had a really really crazy navy admirals and commanders and captains, which go on to fight into the Barbary Wars, which are, again, a huge, a huge step forward in American kind of not declaration of power but it's a kind of a cool way to show like yo this is this is we're, we're, we're not just some small middling power we actually have some kind of really cool things to do in the world and with the war of 1812 though is funny because uh for the most part britain just ransacked their way through the majority of the u.s they burnt the white house to the ground and the only reason the war of 1812 kind of ended up becoming um uh, not a, a stalemate, but the reason that, that we won the War of 1812 was a freak hurricane. It smashed through a bunch of uh, forces. We blockaded them down the, the Potomac. And then when the treaty was signed, the only actual true conflict of the war, the Battle of New Orleans, uh, New Orleans, was one of like the most one-sided battles in, in, in modern history at the time. Um, I, I think Andrew Jackson was con was in charge of the uh, the, the forces at uh, in New Orleans. And right at the start of, of the conflict, uh, a cannonball took off the head of the general, the, the British general. So the British didn't know to do a retreat. They had a general attack. So they were all attacking and they were just getting gunned down nonstop. They didn't know what was going on. They had no real structure of command. And it also, because of that conflict, it changed the way that command worked throughout the rest of the 19th century and the way orders were disseminated. Because up to that point, you got everything down from general down all the way through all of your, your separate chains of command. It changed that. It changed that. It, it made it so that units were to act um, appropriately for their engagement, but they would respond to a general's summons or orders uh, as their overarching command. But it, it, it was a huge loss because it was like, I, I the it's one of those things of like, uh, history is written by the victor, right? So, like, the Battle of New Orleans had, like, 15 American casualties and hundreds, thousands of British casualties. I I'm sure it's not truly that skewed, but it was something super minuscule to something super a lot. Yeah, I, the, uh, the War of 1812, the, the, the peace, I don't think it was an armistice, I think it was just a treaty, because an armistice is a cessation, a cessation of, of, uh, of, uh, it's not a full-on treaty. 
an armistice was signed at the end of World War I. Um, but it, the Battle of New Orleans was like three weeks after the treaty was signed. <laughs> That expedition of mission command isn't in the uh, exact right. Hey, you're right, it's not. But I'm I'm paraphrasing it down to like the fact that um the the way of command in, in, in military history in the eighteenth century and the nineteenth century changes drastically because of those needs. Um and that's a big thing, Ham Taylor you said, imagine wearing British wool fighting in Louisiana during the summer. Brutal. Um The Napoleonic veterans came across all wearing heavy wool um, military outfits that were actually like, and they didn't know the they didn't know the landscape, all that stuff, because during 1776, during the actual War of Independence, um, you the Brit uh, the British forces that were trying to quell the colonists had loyalists to to support them, and they had. Uh, people to pull from the local region and say like, yeah, you know, this this is how you navigate these areas. Um, it wasn't overwhelm overwhelmingly in one way, but still, it was enough knowledge that they knew how to navigate the land. In the War of 1812, they, they knew nothing. Uh, they had some <clears throat> uh, Indian scouts and they had British Canadian soldiers, but by and large, like they're like, oh, what the fuck are we doing? We got these wool coats on. Star Spangled Banner was written in the War of 1812 on a boat by a drunk poet. And he was just like, fuck it. And he, he was watching, um, was it 1812? Or was it the Civil War? It, and he was on a boat and it was like, oh, it's a blockade. You can't get through. Sorry. Um, and he was drunk and he wrote it. Like it, it wasn't like a, I need to write something. That will stir the hearts of men. It, it was it was legitimately like a fucking let's write a limerick. <laughs> it is eighteen twelve. Okay, a prisoner aboard a British ship. Okay, I thought he was on a I thought he was on a boat that was um that was embargoed and couldn't get in, and he was just like, "Well, fuck, I, I'll kill the time." I'm I, I thought that's how that went. That went. Uh, the favorite fact about the war is that during the raising of Washington, the British commander ordered the destruction of the block with the, the letter C at all printing shops to stop them from defaming his name. His name was Cochrane. I, I, I'm not doubting Ace at all. I just, I thought, it, <laughs> I thought it was literally some guy on a boat just going like, oh, fuck it, man. <clears throat> I don't know what it is, Fair Fight. I, I know what it is, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I There used to be a, a dirge of really good Civil War games that came out in like the, kind of the early era of gaming in like the late 90s, early millennium. They were really good. They were really, really good. Okay. Spontaneous history, history set. I'm sorry, buddy. I just said okay. I wasn't trying to amp you up there. So what do we do? Okay, we did... We're building uh, iron... Kind of swapping some things out. Let's see how this all balances out. We we're using all the surplus fertilizer. I've heard of that, Travers. I've heard of that. Halls of Montezuma is from uh, the Barbary Wars, I believe. Or no, Shores of Tripoli is from Barbary Wars. Okay, let's look at. Okay, where's our how's our iron going? Iron. All the monsters from the Mexican American War. Thank you. Yes, Jeremy. I was thinking of uh, the Shores of Tripoli. Because I was like, what the fuck is Shores of Tripoli? When we when we get involved in that, and that's when I learned about that. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to the iron mines. And are we doing anything to? Oh, I mean, we just didn't make more. We that's right. We're doing all this. We can't do anything more to increase the production. I might. I might actually. What's this? 
President Andrew Jackson has defiled the ruling of the Supreme Court and ordered the removal of the Cherokee people to the Indian Territory. What does the Supreme Court opinion matter? It's not even legal. I'm not going to lie to you. I can get very emotional <clears throat> about America and being American and my love for my country. But I absolutely fucking hate the history of the Trail of Tears. Like, that's... That is some down. That's why the 19th century portion of U.S. history is always like really kind of glossed over in American classes. It's like, oh yeah. Um, so there's War of 1812, and there's the Civil War, and the Industrial Revolution was great. Let's jump into the 1900s. It's like, no. What about the what about that 50 years where you just fucked over the indigenous people? Can we talk about that? Like, I hate it. I hate. I hate the Trail of Tears. Oof, we need a lot of fabric. So, let's go over here to buildings. Some of these farms could be turned into fabric. No, no, it's not farms. Uh, it's livestock ranches. These are all slaughterhouses. Shit, fuck. Uh, Rainmar, I wouldn't really necessarily say that. Uh... Germany lost World War One and Two before we got involved. Really, I think World War Two needed our involvement, but Operation Barbosa, Barbarossa was. If you look at the amount of casualties and captured people in Operation Barbarossa, it's it's fucking wild. Had had that not happened, I don't know if if even U.S. getting involved in the Western Front would have mattered. Because, like, it's it's millions. It's millions. It's wild. It is fucking wild. I think it's pretty, it's pretty commonplace for the U.S. to kind of conflagrate their importance in World War II. But it, it was important because we were the only economy pretty much completely, only superpower completely untouched by the results of World War II. Um, but, man, the conflict between Germany and Russia drained Germany of its fighting power. Really, really drained it of its fighting power. Meanwhile, Russia is like, keep fucking churning. <laughs> um, I think that had the US not gotten involved in World War II, it would have been a very interesting conflict, that's for sure. I think the, the, the US needed to get involved, but I don't think that like, I think it's, it, yeah, World War II made America because it we were the only one to come out. Everyone then borrowed from us, and it boomed our economy. It led to track housing and, and this massive influx of, of population boom and stuff like that. I like to talk to the U.S. pressure on Indians. Was it? Is we struggling to keep on as a Not yet. One hundred percent, Jeremy. Russia couldn't have trained German uh, manpower without lend -lease. Totally true. Totally true. Canada exists too, you know. What the fuck? Who knows about... Do you know the trappers? People who sell furs? <laughs> I just mean the direct involvement, like our troops in World War One. Man, I, I didn't realize that because like, I had just recently kind of uh, learned more about World War One. I. I didn't realize a how many nations were actually involved in it, and how late into the conflict the U.S. shows up. Like the U.S. shows up to kind of shore up the defenses in, in Germany's last real big last ditch effort to attack. And then, that, then it's like, okay, well, that's it. That the, the 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 war ended like a year or two, three later. I, I don't remember the total amount of years, but like, I had no fucking idea. Like, I, again, World War One kind of glossed over compared to World War Two, because like, like you guys just said, that's that's the pivotal point that made like the U.S. It super boomed our economy. The result in it too, everyone lending from us, it was massive. And yeah, lend lease was a big thing there too, uh, Duros. Like, uh, we supplied so many things to 
our allies before we actually got involved. Yeah, that showed up in 1970 and ended in 1918. Yeah, 100%. And the problem with World War One is the same thing I mean with World War Two with the U.S. troops is that we didn't have an army that was fully equipped to fight. We started it when we started to go into the conflict. Both times, both times. And especially in World War II, because we thought, oh, well, we'll never need, to, we'll never need to be involved in, in a, on a on a conflict of that scale again. And when it started, we we're like, fuck, time to start training the troops. Oh, U.S. started to mobilize and get ready for war before the war. They joined the wars, obviously. Right, I just mean like the, the normal the normal like just run the mill soldier ace guy. Hundred percent. Korean War is pretty wild. The whole Southeast Asia kind of fall of colonies and uh rise of independence that land that area, that land is is really wild as well. A steadfast supporter. Our modest fellowship expands. Hey, thank you very much, man. I don't know who just did it, but thank you very much for becoming a... Uh, I can't see the name. Abaku, thank you very much for subscribing on Twitch, my dude. Are we down to 38 viewers? I I got too heavy into a uh, to history and we just tanked. Or maybe something on maybe something on YouTube. Oh, I know. Back to seventy three. That was weird. Oh, okay. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate that, man. Kenneth, I think if you like, I think if you like Hearts of Iron but don't like CK three, I think you might like that. I think you might like this game more. I like CK three more than. Hearts of Iron, so I'm not enjoying this game as much. I guess we're this is an inactive trade route, so I guess we'll do that. Let's do a. Can we do a quick import of this? What are you doing, buddy? Everyone's like bringing me toys. Like motherfucker, I want to play. That's what I'm doing. I need a ton though. Oh god. Beef Panda, what's up, man? I gotta start some of these things build and kind of come online. I think. I don't know, man. I I feel like even though this is a bigger, larger economy, it's scarier and harder to navigate. Yeah, I, I do definitely feel like I just kind of interact with like a lot of random things. I just hear him like chewing on his way here. It's weird. Now we have a wood issue. God damn it, man. Oh, cause we're because we're doing construction. Are we doing what kind of construction are we doing? Iron frame, okay. Well, that's lovely to see. <clears throat> Two hundred one thousand people love me. 15 million pops. There's our population. There we go. Okay. Number six in the world. GDP is going up. Balance is going up. Armin. 
Let's put it to a vote. Let's put it to a vote. <clears throat> oh, answer Q&A? That's kind of cool. Uh, Sardinia Piedmont, we stopped playing Laser Edge because I was just kind of getting really frustrated with it. You know, just we'll, we'll just put yes and no. We'll just put the yes and no. I want to. I'm curious what you guys say. You 70 some odd people watching here today. Man and Markle. I've never played EU4. I'm really interested in it. Use the almighty dollar. Yeah, how do we, how do we expand? How, can I get involved in something? I really don't want to fucking fight. I, I just talked about how much I don't want to uh, <laughs> reenact the Trail of Tears. Can I just make them like... I, Marshall, I could probably get all those DLCs if I just messaged, uh, what's it called, and say, hey, can I get a key for it? They sent me one for Solaris. A new subscriber hey, arrives. thank you very much, man. Fills you with determination. That's me. Thank you for becoming a new sub of the channel here, uh, a new sub of Twitch. Guys. Taylor McWhiskey is loving this game. Oh, okay, cool. Taylor McWhiskey, uh... What's his name? Told me to take a look at him. Spiff and Brit. Honey Badger, what's up, brother? Indian territory. Okay. They're part. They're a client state of mine, right? Improve those relations. Relation conversion. Encourage manufacturing industry. Maybe resources. Dude, I fucking feel like I did. Uh, what's SoCal open? Oh, uh, for uh, for forty k. <clears throat> What would you like to see more of? Vicky 3. CK 3. Banner Lord. Warhammer 3. There you go. SP, what's up, man? Run into them at all costs. Try invading through California. Can I? Do it, bud. Get there in my yard. God, there's so many. Jesus. Tune is a banger. I know Vicky 3 is a fad right now, man, but I don't know if I can get behind it, brother. I am I'm having too I'm I think I'm just too bored with the game. Oh great. I'm dealing with the market. I dealt with the market. I don't know what to do with anything else now. Like, okay, I need more fabric. We're the number two producer in the fucking world. Reduce this fabric. Yeah. 
You know, man, I'll be honest with you. I, I, Warhammer 3 is kind of old hat right now until Chaos Dwarfs come. No one's really going to want to play it, I don't think. Yeah, I know. It's like, it's like, we need more fabric. Well, who the fuck? Where are we going to get it from? You know, Shay, I, I think most streamers are c confused with it because when you stream a game, if you aren't some form of authority, it can kind of feel like a hit to your ego as a streamer. And I'm totally fine with learning things on stream, but I think what is like, what's bothersome is that even though I'm learning, I feel like the presentation is boring. I feel like people watching this are kind of like, eh, okay. Because I don't have anything really worthwhile to offer. My protection of this is fucking through the roof too. What is up, Eli? One sec, guys. Hold on. Sorry to my mom. Yeah, I mean the history lesson part's fun, but <laughs> I feel like my my frustration is not. All of this, to be fair, all of this, dude. What is going on here? How do I help with this? Can I get involved here? What do I do? Like, what the fuck? To declare war on these guys? Like, I'm trying to help Texas here. What happens if they lose this war? What the fuck's going on over here? American colony? Okay, whatever. I hear you just chomping away on the thing, buddy. I feel like the UI is not intuitive enough in a lot of things. Okay, well, how's your war going? I, fuck, man. Yeah, this te I saw the Texas statehood one, but, like, can I even help out in this war? Like... No, I can't do shit with them. To conquer a state. I don't know, man, Armin. <laughs> I'm just trying to learn the game, dude.
Yeah, I don't know what the fuck to do, man. Like, I, it's like, oh, Texas, you got to make sure they maintain it. Well, how the fuck do I help them? Well, you can't help them. Well, how do I do anything? Well, you can't do anything cool. Okay, well, what the fuck? Do I conquer a state like in Colorado to like divert forces away from Texas? Do I go conquer Mexican Texas? Yeah, I can't. I gotta make more fucking, more fucking fabric too. So I gotta do like forty fucking things. That I don't know what to do. I guess I don't know. They might have played my ass into a war. Well, yeah, I fucking hope it does. I got Roman squeaking a squeaky toy at my feet. I blow up kind of comedically. I'm not actually mad. I'm just, I just want to do something. I'm just like, what the fuck's going on? Uh, Charles Finney can go fuck himself, leader of the evan evangelicals, has proposed outright prohibiting slavery in all new Western territories. Some opponents demand simple moderation, but others demand legalization of slavery in all new territories. <laughs> okay, this looks interesting. Abolish slavery in the West, expand slavery in the West. Um, this is what actually historically happened, if I, can rem if I remember pr correctly. Oh, this remains a state-by-state -state issue. Oh, never mind. I thought this was something different. Let's accept that. The most prominent members of New York High Society have seen an organizing of luxurious parties in the new and lavish urban buildings. Dude, fuck me and your dog, my dog. Let them celebrate. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have, ow, ow. Oh, oh, ah, fuck. Roman just dropped his, he just people's elbowed my toes. He just went like that. He just dropped his elbow down, down. I know, buddy, I know. Are you bored? It's okay. It's just the Victorian era. It's naturally that kind of dusty. Yeah, how do I do anything? How do I do... I wish I could help you, Texas, but the game has given me zero context clues on what I can fucking do for you. That's a grand strategy. Bankroll you? Here, have, have some money. I don't know what that does for you. Chief John Ross, one of the principal Cherokee chiefs, has presented a petition to Congress asking them to void the treaty which will compel the Cherokee nation to relocate to the Yukon. The petition has, has almost as many signatures as the entire eastern Cherokee population. Just to avoid the... Yeah, yeah, fuck that shit. You guys just want to see him get mad? <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you guys, like I've said. I, I tried to make this, this claim earlier, but I can't. Uh, number six producer in the world. Who could we fucking possibly import it from? The Russian market, I suppose, is booming. Let's try that. We're gonna produce more, but we'll we'll, we'll reduce it in due time. Two white lightnings at lunch. At lunch. Um, this is all just to buy time. To November 17th, when we can get absolutely obliteratingly balls deep in Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. Hey, bud. 
He runs in between my legs and looks back up at me. It's really funny. Yeah, I'm just gonna. We're, I'm gonna see how this goes. You guys know I'm I'm all down for experimenting with things. I'll try. I'll 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 touch anything twice. So what is happening over here? The ports. Okay. Uh, at a wargle. I love Elden Ring. Elden Ring's great. Okay, well, add a war goal. Conquer state. New Mexico. That's what I want to do. Azrael, thank you very much for the ten dollar donation, man. Very much appreciated, dude. Come on over here. I have no idea how to do war, by the way. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. How do I add a general there? The moan for my Italian brother. Thank you very much, man. Ah, yes. So we've mobilized the generals. Okay, so he's mobilized. Where do we sell in Tommy Jessup? Can I send him here? Nope. Nope. No. Okay, yeah. Why, why would I want to ever press a button that would fucking make something sense? If you think it wasn't like this... Yeah, I'll definitely play with subs when Dark Tide comes out. But subs better not be fucking weird, man. I've seen those... The the CK3 one... Or I'm not CK3. The, uh, the subs that... The, the ones that... Uh, what's his name used to do? Um... Well, Master of Sotek used to do a bunch of those, and they got they got really out of hand. So the second they got out of, they they get out of hand, I'm gonna be like, nope. What the fuck do I even do? I might as well mobilize him. Oh, he's mobilized. So go to the barracks, of South Carolina. Defend front, advance front. Order this commander to advance a front. Okay, so I want you to go defend. That, that's got two dudes. Let me do this, actually. I want you to go defend this front. When you... Okay, okay, now I'm getting it. Not intuitive, not intuitive in the slightest, but I'm getting it now. Advance this front. I don't know why Winfield Scott. Scott can go fuck himself. If it was easy, then it wouldn't be war. Uh oh, Riders of Rohan have, have, have approached. Well, how do we get more artillery, man? We're the number nine producer in the world, so. High tensions, huh? Why? I didn't do anything. Oh shit. Okay, now, now I understand. Great Plains HQ. 
Garrison of the Great Plain HQ is zero to zero reserve. Well, where's the colonies button? That Midwest HQ. I don't, know. don't really know what's going on. We have a 30 percent advantage due to we have three units, so this is a 100 percent advantage. Okay. Uh, Azrael, this is Vicky three. I did, Captain here. So, uh, what happens here? Juan Alvarez is defending the front. So we're both just defending. But what if I did this? Uh, I've decided to move over to America now because I wanted to try a different angle. Because Sardinia was pissed me off. So the New York Utah front is not a useful geographic indicator. You are correct. Okay, there's a mid game start date, so you start with your economy, so a little more toys to play with. That's kind of. Mm -hmm. So what happens here? Like. Okay. Are we waiting for something? Advancing the front. Pushing from advancement. Okay. Can I can I reduce those tensions somehow? Can I do something with my flotillas? Can I do something cool with that? Patrol coast, raid convoys, which is important in a previous landing. Ah. I'll raid those convoys, I guess. happens. Oh shit. The Texan statehood that's now part of uh Mexico. Just got rolled over. It must be out of good graces that I can't get an acknowledgement. What do you mean, ducks? Or do? Oh, well. Did. We're going to find out. So I activated the conscripts. Does it take like a time for them to appear or something?
Yeah, okay, so this one says mobilized. Added to the existing army over time. Okay. Well, then let's activate more conscripts. Two more. Is this the mil is this is this it? Count down to war, okay. Oh, settle down, Roman. You little your little cries over there ain't gonna change anything, bub bub. All right, ducks, have a good one, man. About to have like an overwhelming force over here. All right, war with Mexico's broken out. Two arms and shit. That's an active battle, and that's an active battle. Is that a win? What is that? Battle between the okay, okay. Yeah, it's a little. It's a little boring. But I mean, it's it's really no different than CK3. I I guess I suppose what did what did people want out of it? Ah, victory! So can I take these armies and move them somewhere else? Abolitionist Martin. An Arden Abolitionist writer died in a firefight against a pro slavery mob which had, grant, which had gathered in front of his house. The story has gone national and radicalized uh, previously athletic individuals high and low. Yeah, my war goals. I was like, I'm like, can I change my war goals? And it wasn't letting me add them. I was like, give me, give me, give me more. I want New Mexico too. Oh, we're gonna lose this one. I think I don't know. These bars going up and down all over the place. Are in Whig Party, Democratic Party. Pre-government reformation. President is Henry Clay. Who becomes an abol uh, abolitionist? <laughs> or are you gonna talk it? He wants talk it, man. Jenny Winnie Scott. I guess we're doing well. Came out uh, two days ago, Azrael. I guess we're doing well.
Vulnerable front, New York, Utah front. So what can I do there? Whoa, 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 whoa. Can I, can I, can I divert people here? I'm just kind of tanking in our economy. <laughs> I'm going to see how this goes. Yeah, as always, guys, if you want, you can use the uh, Nexus Store to support the channel. Yeah, I, I, I don't see the ability to do so. Unpressed war goals. Conquer Mexican Colorado. Guess that? American War Operations? Oh, no, 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 I don't want that. I don't even know what the fuck's going on. Oh, shit, what did I do? Doros, thank you very much, man. <laughs> it's not, there's no incest at all. <laughs>
Hmm. Who's in this one? I think we're doing really well. <laughs> Gold discovered in Sonora. Motherfucker. Henry Clay, an outspoken abolitionist, has been beaten with a cane by John Calhoun, a slave owner. Clay's injuries compel him to come. Oh, I'm blessed and retired from public office. Calhoun still currently walks free. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think I just caused. I think I just. Yeah, yeah, yeah I thought. They expressed their concerns about government decisions clearly in favor of the interests of the industrialists. Needs to be addressed. Conditions have started declining up to distant farms in District of Columbia. Hmm. Interesting. That's some CK3 stuff right there. Those Habsburgs. Do these guys just kind of keep doing all this? Do I do I cause a piece or what happens here?
Oh my god, I opened up like five more fr fronts over here now. Kind of just watching a bunch of bars go. Kind of wild. All right, Travers, have a good one, dude. Yeah, we're about to end our stream here too. In like the next three minutes here, I'm just trying to finish this war. Colorado will be mine. Dixie pops. Okay, so military activate conscriptions. Dixie. Okay, well, Dixie, not on this anymore. Do I have to do it? Yeah, this is Dixie, right? Because he's from Dixie? I think it's just this. Yeah, it's this location. So. Activate conscripts. There we go. A certain future problem. Battle bud. We're gonna you're gonna eat food in a little bit. You're gonna be dying over there. Following worlds have been forced. Okay. So we just got that. Can I, I, now can I just go like... Or is there like a time of like... Thought so. Have a truce. That's kind of crappy, man. So like, you have to like... like how do you win large swaths of territory? All right. Either way, that was a good one to end it on. We'll go ahead and uh, what, what did I do? What happened there? Credits. Oh, there we go. That was weird. Um. All right, guys. So let me go ahead and save this. There we go. Let's give out some thank yous here because we got a huge donation today. Uh, stretch the. Ooh, I'm sorry. Azrael did a ten dollar donation, but our only other big donation of the day comes from Firefly at one hundred and fifty dollars. Man, thank you so so much. You add, I tried to add Wargold. Let me do it. Oh, okay. I, I mean, like I tried to do it in that lead up, and it wasn't like it wasn't very clear cut. So that was kind of funky. The state that you need to the war goal using your limited points allotted during the lead up. Okay. Well, we'll try that again, I guess, sometime. But, um. I gotta kind of make some decisions here on whether or not I want to keep going with Vicky Three on the channel. Um, Bannerlord's popping off pretty heavily right now, and Medicare, Medicare searcher. I don't need that. At least you got Aspen. Time for some. It's time for some. Uh, uh, what's it called? Snowboarding. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll take a look here. I'm, I'm looking at like... Like... Bannerlords are going wild right now. So I might just stick with Bannerlord for a little bit. I, I don't know. I, I'm not really necessarily uh, enthused with the Vicky. So we'll kind of see how I feel 
as I maybe spend a little bit more time with it, I might get out a quick tips video for things that I have learned that I think I would have, if had I known the beginning, they might have helped me a little bit more in framing the, the game and maybe giving people a rundown on how to play the game initially, but I still don't really know how to play the game very well. So I don't know if I'm like the best source on, on giving people information. I wasn't when I taught CK3 and I kind of learned it more as I played it. Um, that's why all my, my CK3 videos are like fragmented over time. But I'll just kind of have to see if I can sit down and put more time into it and see what, it, see what it's like. I know you guys want to see it according to the people that have been watching this stream, but I don't know how many people want to see it on the channel as a whole and what its kind of long-term playability is. Like, I think Bannerlord is going to have a lot more long-term playability because of mods and everything. And again, like I said, this is all going to be just like a 19-day holdover until we jump into Dark Tide come the 17th. So we'll kind of see how I feel, what I'm feeling. Um... Thank you guys all very much though for your helping me in, in learning this game. It's been it has been a headache in learning how to play. I mean when it when it clicks though, it clicks really well. Um really well. So I do like when it clicks, and like I said, I like the I like the historical era, so I like the subject material. Um it's just trying to find a way to relate to all the little tiny buttons and things that I'm constantly having to pop through and look at and, and influence and touch and and uh touch into. So We'll just kind of see how that how that goes in time. I, I do like playing as America more than Sardinia Piedmont, though. Uh, that that's kind of worth saying. It's nice to have a really cool kind of burgeoning economy that I can do whatever I want with. Oh, I'll just I'll just do some trades there. I'll do this there. I'll, I'll increase a building here without really worrying about the huge ramifications. So those things are all really really nice, and I do like that. But. Um, as always guys, thank you so much for watching here today. I don't know what we'll be streaming this weekend or if we will, I might just be doing some Halloween shenanigans. So I will find out how that goes. But again, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one. Stay safe. Take care. Wash your hands <laughs> and I'll see you bros. Maybe Saturday or Sunday. If not on Tuesday, I might just work on some videos and stuff like that and kind of take it easy because I've been streaming the last four days. Like I could use a little break here. Um, so we'll, we'll see how things kind of, uh, sort themselves out. But again, guys, thank you so much for watching here. Have a good one and take care.